Hi, I'm Bullette, and this is my first book talk video. Today we're going to be talking about Serafina by Rachel Hartman. This book falls into the category of high fantasy. It has a strong writing style and is really engaging. A lot of this has to do with our captivating main character, Serafina. I'm going to preface our discussion today with my theory that there are two kinds of readers in the world, those who run screaming at the word dragon and those who don't. If you are one of the former, try to steal your fight or flight reflex, because this book does dragons right. Dragons in this world are emotionless, knowledge-seeking creatures. When hoarding gold and treasure was no longer an option, they turned to hoarding knowledge. Hartman's take on dragons is really kind of fun. They can take human shape and essentially get the equivalent of dragon green cards to live amongst humans, but they really don't know how to act appropriately in human society and they have to learn how to fit in. Human emotions are perplexing and troubling to dragons, and while a dragon who is new to human form is pretty much just a dragon personality within a human shell, um, if a dragon spends too much time around humans, he can begin to pick up these pesky human habits of complex emotions like love. These emotions are foreign and frightening and against dragon nature. So any dragons who experiences such feelings are forced to have their minds basically reset. This, of course, involves wiping memories, which many dragons who are just experiencing these emotions for the first time resent. But this story isn't just about dragons, it's about sabotage, plots of murder, two kingdoms on the brink of war, and a little bit about blooming and forbidden love. And our main character, Serafina, is smack dab in the middle of everything. Serafina is a young woman with a deadly secret. Don't worry, there won't be any spoilers here. Anyway. Serafina is an extremely gifted music apprentice in the Kingdom of Gorin. This book takes place just before a big festival celebrating the 40-year peace between the dragons and the humans. This peace has been at times rocky, and there is a lot of basically the equivalent of racism on both sides. Unfortunately, just before the celebration of unity, the crown, Prince of Gorin, is found dead in such a way that points straight to the dragons. Tensions are high. And Serafina, who has tried so hard to keep her head down and go unnoticed in the capital, due to that deadly secret I mentioned earlier, is dragged into an investigation that is way over her head. Serafina is a smart and charming protagonist. She is very human. At one moment, her adrenaline is pumping and she is wowing others with her cleverness, and the next she is panicking about the fact that she is way in over her head. The pacing of the book was great. I never got bored or became uninterested in Serafina or what she was going through, as we follow her through her life and interactions with others. Uh, she's just plain fun to root for. Uh, while this is a YA book, the quality of the writing is at such a high level that adults can enjoy it as well. Anyone from middle school to adulthood can appreciate this book if they come at it with the right attitude. If you're too busy focusing on the fact that there are dragons, you're going to miss out on the human interactions that make the story great. There are a lot of fantasy books out there, good and bad, and I have read quite a few from both categories. I have to say that this is one of the best YA fantasy novels that I've read. This is not a sloppy or lazily written fantasy adventure. It is well crafted and well thought out, and I can't wait to dive into the sequel to see how everything turns out for our bold and plucky heroine, Serafina, who, did I mention, has a deadly secret? Well, that's it for this book talk video. I'll see you guys next time in my book talk video for The Red Queen by Victoria Inner.